guys, it's MA76Bball, and I'm back with the final performance review on the LeBron 13 Elite. But uh, before I get into that, I just want to say a huge thank you to the subscribers and for a lot of people who have been contacting me with questions about basketball and basketball shoes and uh, yeah, just trying my best to help you guys out. But it's, uh, it's really intriguing that uh, you know, I've been able to communicate with some people uh, out in Europe uh, in the States, uh, back home in Canada, and a few of you contacted me here in Japan. So, uh, I mean, how cool is that just to, uh, you know, chit chat about kicks and basketball with people all over the world? So, uh, yeah, thank you guys. That's uh, just super stoked on that, and it's a pretty good feeling. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you. I don't, I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, that's, just, that's just way too cool. So uh, let's uh, get into things, let's move on to the performance review and the first thing is I'm going to give you the breakdown right here. Uh, it's a total of 16 hours that I put into my shoes and uh, I had 8 hours uh, on the outdoor court, 4 hours on the indoor court and 4 hours on a semi-dusty court, sorry, a uh, pristine court and another 4 hours on a semi-dusty court. So about the outdoor court, 8 hours is quite a bit, it's just because I'm on my break uh, my summer break so I'm able to hit the outdoor courts quite often and uh, just put the shoes to use you know what I mean so uh, with that being said guys let's jump into the outsole slash traction so the first thing is uh, when I took the shoes straight out of the box I usually tend to do this uh, just take my hand and just kind of rub the outsole and well, kind of to my surprise for a LeBron model it was uh, very tacky and very sticky and you know, not so much as the Kobe 9, but it was definitely something that was like, oh, that kind of surprised me. So that was a, that's a great sign to start things off. So the outsole is a translucent uh, rubber, which we see on a lot of shoes these days. And you know, translucent, you know, traction tends to be mm, hit or miss kind of thing, whereas solid rubber tends to be a little bit more consistent. But uh, I can tell you right now, this traction was phenomenal. One thing that kind of blew me away, which is interesting, I've never ever experienced this before, the shoe was squeaking on the outdoor court that I was playing. Now, that could be just the surface, the finishing of the surface on the concrete or asphalt, whatever it is, but like the shoe was squeaking outdoors, which is kind of funny, and uh, I've never experienced that before. I've never heard any of my friends' uh, shoes squeaking out outdoors, so that was fantastic. Semi-dusty court, no problem. Pristine court, obviously, no problem. So uh, I'm super stoked on this traction. I don't think anyone would have any problems with it, but you never know, who knows. Um, having a look at the outsole, let's start off with the, the heel portion. So you have a, a ton of triangles, uh, which is also the design seen on the box. And then on the large um, hex zoom, it's a 13 millimeter uh, zoom bag. You have a few bars uh, running toe to heel and then you have a couple bars uh, running you know left to right so uh, uh, theoretically you know that's, that will cover you right in, um, in all the uh, multi directions that you make when we're playing basketball so moving along to the forefoot which is quite busy you've got another large 13 millimeter zoom bag and again you see the couple bars running toe to heel and then a few more bars running left to right then you've got uh, four red zoom bags. Um, now if you look at the bars on each of four of these bags, basically they're covering all directions. So um, yeah, not much to say there guys. Like I said, my experience with this particular pair, like the traction was outstanding regardless of where I was playing. So it didn't really matter. So, I mean, it's not a very, it's a very untraditional type outsole, it looks kind of quirky, um, and it's, you know, reminiscent of LeBron 12, but it works, so no complaints there. Next up for cushioning, you've got the Phylon midsole, um, yeah, I don't have much to say there, it, it did its job, the shoe was very comfortable, it was a great ride, the impact protection was there, um, one cool thing is, the Phylon running along um, the side here actually wraps up and acts as a bit of a heel counter and uh, then it comes around and there's another wing um, coming up slightly and then continues on. So 
They use the Phylon as a heal counter. That's kind of a pretty good way to utilize um, you know, the material. There is an internal heal counter as well. Um, so, you know, it's not this alone. But anyways, that um, in combination with the Zoom Bags, it was a very, very comfortable ride. Now, when you're walking or standing, uh, just like the 12, it's wobbly, it feels kind of unstable, it's very odd. But as soon as you're moving at basketball speeds, as soon as you're moving like jogging up and down the court, um, that's not a non-issue. Um, the shoe, the stability, the support was just outstanding. But anyways, coming back to uh, cushioning um, and the outsole, uh, just for me, that's easily a 9 out of 10. So uh, next up, I just want to talk about the, the upper. So let's jump into that. So the upper is called uh, Kurum. It's a company from, uh, ooh, I believe it's Taiwan. And this material is very, very pliable, very soft in the forefoot, uh, the front half of the shoe, I should say. And then as you come towards the rear and come up towards the ankle collar, it gets stiffer and more supportive. Now, the fantastic thing that I loved about this material is uh, after it broke in, it's, dare I say, it's like a second skin. So it did not restrict the movements whatsoever. It was very supportive. Again, after the break-in period, it did wrap my foot very well. And uh, yeah, it's just very interesting, you know. Um, I don't know what other applications they use this material in, but in terms of a basketball shoe, yeah, it was implemented very well, uh, in my humble opinion. And um, yeah, that's all about, uh, that's the only thing I want to say about uh, about the upper, upper material. You know, there's the 3M swoosh, there's a LeBron signature, uh, one fantastic detail is the lion on the tongue and on the heel of the left shoe it says LeBron and uh, heel, on the back of the heel on the right shoe it says James. So those are just some kind of nice details. Even much further down next to the um, carbon fiber uh, shank it says Elite. Um, I'm just going to you know, ramble off some details here guys. On the heel, on the outsole, it says Nike Zoom. Underneath the, <clears throat> the heel Zoom bag, says LeBron James Acronite 1284. And then the um, underneath the uh, metatarsal large uh, volume Zoom bag, it says Max Volume 13.0, which I imagine is 13 millimeters. And then some other numbers, I have no idea. Anyways, uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is the lacing system. So let's talk about the lacing system for the first one, two, three, four, five uh, eyelets. Uh, it is strictly flywire, that's it. There's no traditional eyelet going through the material of the upper. It's just um, flywire, which, you know, I've heard a lot of comments like, oh boy, is that going to be enough? Are they going to bust? And uh, even I was, uh, you know, kind of have that on my mind as well. Then the last two upper um, eyelets do have a traditional eyelet through the material and the fly wire. So um, I wanna the one thing I want to point out. I would say the first four or five times that I laced this shoe up, it was annoying and disappointing because what would happen is I would tie up this, uh, like for example, the second set of laces or the second set of eyelets, pull, and then as soon as you let go to tie up the third set, that second set would just go loose. And um, man, that was really disappointing. The upper two eyelets, no issues there. However, the reason for that was the upper material just had to break in or the materials overall of the shoe just had to break in because by the time I was at 13, 14 hours, that completely went away. So that was not an issue anymore. And now there's just it just laces up like a regular shoe, so um, I'm glad uh, you know that worked itself out. Uh, next up, I would like to talk about the overall fit. Um, the shoes run true to size. I'm an eight and a half, and these are eight and a half, and lengthwise it's no problem. But up in the forefoot area, it seems to be a little bit uh, on the wider side. So 
you know, any ballers out there with uh, average to wide feet, you know, it should give you a really, really nice fit. If you've got narrow, skinny, low volume type foot, mm, you know, like myself, yeah, you're gonna have to play around with it a little bit. I went the way of wearing uh, two socks and that took care of things. There is another option, uh, and I'll get into that. I'll show you that a little bit later. So the support of the shoe, um, I thought, you know, just hands down, it was fantastic. Obviously, it's made for, you know, behemoth of a man, 6'8", 260, whatever he is. But, um, so first of all, you have that phylon coming up here, so that kind of helps wrap the foot a little bit. Then you've got the carbon fiber wing that comes up quite high and then wraps underneath the arch. It doesn't wrap all the way around the foot, just about halfway. So I thought this carbon fiber wing might, um, you know, dig into my foot or cause uh, some discomfort. And again, not the case at all. Uh, I couldn't even feel it when I was playing. So with that, um, you're adding in, I would say a fairly wide base. Um, it does, the outrigger is fairly wide, um, comes up quite a bit. Uh, even the heel, it being kind of like a squarish, you know, hexagon type shape, it is again wider than the heel cup. So yeah, the support in this shoe is fantastic. So the other option that I mentioned before when, uh, you know, trying to solve the issue of a good fit, if you look at the left insole, that's the original Elite insole, it's very thin, not much to it. And then on the right you can see the insole from uh, one of my ASICS running shoes and you can see how much thicker it is, but not to the point that it alters the fit of the shoe, it just helps take up um, some extra slack, um, you know, take care, takes care of the extra volume in the shoe. So that's always an option for um, any of you out there who are trying to figure out the fit of a shoe or if you've got a skinnier foot, um, there you go. One thing that I want to point out would be durability. Uh, I have put 16 hours into this shoe and a lot of it, half of it was uh, outdoors and you know, got people stepping on the shoe and whatever. And it still to me looks brand new. So I think that um, can be attributed to the fact that it's made out of cure. The, the material, you know, it's kind of like, kind of like a rubber, plastic. So I don't think it's a shoe that is going to show its age. I think it's going to look new for a very long time, which is a huge added bonus um, when you're spending your dollars. Uh, for the exception of the white one, of course, that one, that one might get dirty, but there's a red color out there as well. So um, yeah, I think uh, the shoe is going to last a very long time, except maybe for players who toe drag. They've got the, the leather toe cap here. Um, I, I don't toe drag, so it's not an issue for me, but uh, it might be for some of you out there. So I would imagine that's going to get scuffed and you know scratched up pretty quickly, but I couldn't tell you. Uh, the last thing that I would like to talk about is when, when I was actually playing, there were a few times when, when I cut real hard, real hard when I cut left to right or right to left, most shoes tend to have some give here on this side here because it cut so hard. Um, this shoe, my goodness, and I have a little uh, footage here when I was doing my traction test, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't give. So first of all, I believe that's going to be because it's an upper material, the Cura material. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of stretch to this material. Um, it's it's pliable, it's soft, it's flexible, but I, don't, I, I personally don't think there's there's no stretch in it. And then added to that, the fly wire placement is right there, um, just on the side of your foot, where you know if the shoe is out of good quality, you can see you can see it a lot in NBA players because they're so big and they, their movements are so powerful and so fast. You can see the shoes just give out right here. And I have had a couple of shoes here and there in the past that have done that. And this one, there's just zero give. So that's great uh, for me, you know, small players. It, it might happen with the bigger players, I don't know. If you've played in this, <coughs> excuse me. If you've played in this uh, and you're a bigger guy and something like that has happened or hasn't happened, please let me know in the comments below. So that's about it guys, um, I'm going to switch things and I'll show you some you know, in-game uh, footage or just uh, some testing done out on the courts 
and I'll make a few points here and there of the features of the shoe. All right. So I'm going to come from the baseline and work my way to the middle of the key. Uh, as I'm backing down the defender, he is larger than me, heavier, stronger, and as uh, I try to back into his body, I'm really, you know, working my legs and pushing backwards. And the shoes that you know, the traction held me down, plus the addition of the uh, debris on the court, uh, there were no issues with slippage, and I felt, you know, confident and. Uh, I was just lucky here with the hands all over the place. They uh, they forgot to protect the hoop, so I just went up and uh, scored. But um, yeah, it's just a great um, a great feeling when you're out on the court and you know that uh, the shoes that you're testing are not going to give out on you. Uh, after that, um, uh, another day here, another week. Uh, I did this um, drill just on purpose to really um, kind of get a feel for the zoom airbag underneath the forefoot and then yeah I can definitely get a response and a nice cushy feel from it. Now on this one I'm just practicing left and right layups but also what I'm paying attention to is the transition even though I'm, I'm not moving at full speed but it is enough to kind of get a feel for the transition of the shoe because it is quite segmented. You have the forefoot and then you have the carbon fiber uh, in the middle there and then you have the heel portion of the shoe. And uh, yeah, the transition was smooth and even more so at, uh, you know, at high speeds. Well, that's that, guys. Uh, thank you for having a look at my review on the LeBron 13 Elite. Uh, in my experience, uh, going through these 16 hours of this shoe, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed the process. Um, you know, it's definitely a shoe I think you guys could uh, easy, easily snatch up, especially now that they're in clearance on sale. I think you guys won't be disappointed after you know the shoe has broken in and the materials have softened up. So, if there are any other uh, further questions, or you know, it could be about the shoe, it could be about basketball, some of the other shoes in my collection, uh, feel free to leave a comment down there, guys. Don't hesitate. I do my best to get back to all of you. And uh, but you know, I want to cut this uh, video a little bit short. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, stay grinding, stay focused, and until uh, the next time, peace.